Morning. I'm Paul, and this is Ask Paul. We're going to talk about measurements today, and our question comes from um, Sammy in Athens, Georgia. And Sammy writes, "What measurements do you depend on when you design and build great audio systems?" That's a really good question, because. High performance audio requires more than just performance. We know that there are tons of amplifiers, CD players, DACs, whatever we're discussing, that have great specs. They measure beautifully and they sound like crap. And some sound great. Some measure okay and they sound marvelous. Some measure well and they sound good too. Measurements that are typical, like intermodulation distortion, harmonic distortion, frequency response, phase response, impulse response, if those are all within acceptable bounds, then how can different equipment sound different? And the answer is quite simple. We don't know how to measure all that we hear. And if we do. Well, I can say we certainly don't. Maybe somebody does. But, but we, we don't know how to do that. Now, that said, it means, of course, that there are so many things that our, our pina, the ear here, and our brain can perceive that our measurement instruments can't, that design of electronics has to be a combination of testing, measuring, and listening. Just like a good chef. You, you can't just pull a recipe out unless you've done it a thousand times. You can't just pull a recipe out without any kind of feedback loop, right? A good chef tastes or smells. Somehow there's a sensory thing going on that lets that person know when it's perfect. Uh, that's a measuring a measurement system right so I don't think there's a whole lot of difference and I can't imagine designing a product with only measuring equipment and then saying you know what it measures great it must be good send it out too many companies do that and the results are that the vast majority of audio equipment doesn't sound all that great and that's why we PS audio for the last 45 years um, have always made a practice of listening, tasting, smelling, and measurements. And we're not the only ones, of course. I mean, goodness, any, any respectable high-performance audio company in the world does exactly that. So this is how I used to measure. All right, this beast, I, I, I tell you, I, I have a love affair with this guy. This is a distortion analyzer from Hewlett Packard. And it's, it's an old clunker, and I just keep it around because I spent so many years in front of this guy. And basically, you, well, let me explain what distortion is. So very simply, distortion is anything that is different between what you're intending to amplify and what's actually coming out. So if I put in a pure sine wave, that just has, let's say, a thousand hertz sine wave. And that's all there is. It, there's no harmonics, things other than the thousand hertz that I want. Harmonics are higher frequencies, like the second harmonic is two, of a thousand is 2,000 hertz. The third harmonic is 3,000 hertz. The, uh, you know, on, on and on like that, okay? And so those are unwanted. If we have a pure tone, we want a pure tone to come out of our amplifier. So this device, a distortion analyzer, measures with a simple notch filter um, that's built into this guy uh, how much distortion. In other words, what is there that wasn't what we started with? So this guy produces a perfectly pure sine wave. And it comes out of the output here. Uh, and I run that through my amplifier that's under test, and then its output goes here to its input. All right, so he's producing the thousand hertz, and I can I can set the frequency here. See, I can set that to 
10 or, or whatever, you know, whatever I want. And there's multiples um, on here. And here's a frequency range. So if I set it to 1K, so that's 10K and on and on, right? You get the idea. So if, it, if I set it here, <coughs> 10 times 100 is 1,000. So there's my 1,000 cycles. What that does is that does two things. It, it sends out a pure 1,000 hertz tone through these outputs into my amplifier. And then as I put that in here, it tunes a filter that takes out that pure signal and then looks on this meter for anything left over. And anything left over isn't what I started with, therefore it's distortion, right? So, uh, oh, this is cool. And you, you'd watch it, you set the level and you get it going, and then you click here for distortion. And then um, it would go blink, and then you'd keep tuning this thing. Where did we tune? I don't even remember how to use this thing anymore. We didn't tune that. Any? Oh yeah, was it sensitivity? Oh, the balance, yep. And anyway. Um, it's been years since I've used this thing. And then finally, when you get it low enough, you can click it to automatic and doom, doom, doom. So the lower this needle goes, the lower the distortion. Now today, we don't use stuff like, but we don't use stuff like that anymore because it's, we've got products like um, the Audio Precision, very expensive computerized versions of this very same thing. So instead of tweaking with all these knobs that I hardly even remember, I have to take a refresher course on this. Um, uh, or, or, or the oscilloscope over here that we, and you can see the oscilloscope here, and, um, and this is how we actually see the waveforms and all that. But, um, so we have uh, modern computerized test equipment that makes it a lot easier. Bottom line, to answer your question, we look for frequency response to make sure it's flat. We look for gain to make sure we hit the gain, uh, if we're talking about an amplifier. so. And we set, you know, we want this thing to go from 0.01 hertz to 40 kilohertz. So we measure and see if it actually does that. And we see, uh, we test its impulse response. We put a very quick pulse through it and we see what happens to it. We do a square wave response where we put a square wave in. <clears throat> and on a square wave, you, you want to make sure that your amplifier is not um, doing funny things where it'll start ringing at the first. You want this nice, clean square wave. A number of amplifiers that measure very well have very poor square wave response. You'll put a square wave in and you'll see that this, it, it'll do this, looks like a spring. Um, and that's because it's over damped in the feedback. So you don't want too much feedback and you can see it in the square wave performance. So we, we make sure the square wave performance is what we want. So what goes in is pretty much what comes out, maybe just slightly rounded off depending on the amplifier's frequency um, extremes. We, oops, ouch. We look for distortion, both intermodulation, which is um, when you put two tones, how does it deal with, does it make more stuff? You know, is it, does it get disturbed when you put two tones in or three? Um, we, what else do we look at? Noise, um, so bandwidth noise, distortion, um, square wave and impulse response. So th those are the, the, the basic measurements that we look for in an amplifier and we do all of that before we get it into the listening room. Once we know that it's measuring properly, then the next step is how does it sound? And then we, it's a process of going back and forth between measuring, listening, measuring, listening, back and forth. So I hope that answers your question. It's a good one. Thank you. Bye-bye.